hello friends welcome to another video uh, so let's see what kind of fun you guys had during these exams okay so this is the paper some of you have written already in the past week or so and I managed to get a copy of it so I was kind of curious as to what kind of fun you guys had so I figured let me just join in in that fun and let's see what you guys must have been doing all right so this is uh, just to try and work out exactly how much you may have gotten that's if you'll be interested as well but I think it's the best way to also you know finish off all the fears and uh, to at least also project expectations much more accurately um, yeah let's see um, so you can tell that uh, this video is much earlier than your memorandums would come out so please do have a look at those memos when they come out and you compare and contrast the approaches all right so let's see see what you guys had so this is paper one for may june 2022 mathematics all right i'm not going to go over those instructions so by the way i do not have the physical science paper okay where i got this one they did not have um, the physical science paper so if you have it please do share it with me um you can see my email address in the channel just check the contacts there you will be able to see one so maybe I should add my whatsapp number later on so that you can also share it via whatsapp if you can all right or at least share any links that you may have so that we can have a look at it as well uh, yeah let's not waste too much time so we'll try and go as far as possible but if I feel like uh, time is really becoming a huge factor, then I may chop the video, okay? Maybe I'll do it in two stages, part one and part two. We'll see, because I doubt my camera is going to last that long. So it has a maximum of about three hours, 47 minutes or so. So, I mean, with all the explanations I like to give, so I am unlikely to, to you know, to do this under three hours and all of it unless i'm going to chop some parts which i don't like to do so let's have a look at this question one of course it's it's the standard solve for x type of questions again um if you'll be watching this video and you probably are still struggling with this section of your paper please have a look at my videos that i attempt mathematics in the classroom paper one materials so have a look there so i try to break down you know multiple approaches and exactly the implications of these questions and that are part of question one okay in your paper one so you may learn something there all right please do look into that um i've done also a series of um you know chapters there but in a more exam related fashion so I've done also question two related, you know, questions. So sequences and series. Again, I'd advise you to have a look at that as well because my approach of doing uh, question two and three sort of or sequences and series questions, I, I just skimmed through this paper. I could tell there are some very interesting questions which I feel if you watch those videos very well, how I answer some of the questions that I designed and others, you know, questions from the past exam question papers, you will notice that um, I have a tendency to do a more graphical representation of each and every section wherever possible. And I think it became very relevant in these questions, as you will see when we continue answering. So I would advise you to go and watch all those videos on sequences and series and i've done some past exam question papers for each section question one question two and functions the only section i didn't do was uh, financial mathematics which i'm going to include on this one 
and maybe that is the next station for my other series of videos try to see how many questions there are and what is the common way they are asking so that you can find a way enough of this uh, explanations because I will waste too much time there so let's not waste it it's too precious here's my calculator just get ready let's not waste it at all all right so question one you know it's solve for x and whenever they say solve for x and you're given, you're given a quadratic you know that you're looking for roots isn't it so like I said watch that video so this is DBE my okay my pig my crayons are done let's take one that's not done as yet okay so this is DBE um, May June 2022 okay paper one so we start with question one and it's the solve for x type of question so 1.1 1 .1. solve for x of course I'm not going to try and be silly here so we're given a quadratic it's x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 0 so when we solve for x we say well we can just use the bracket method of solving here of course you can use a general quadratic formula it's still okay you can do this by completing the square these are some of the things I point out in those mathematics in the classroom videos that I suggest you go and watch maybe you'll learn a few things there as well which I think they're quite crucial as you progress in your answering so we look for factors of the first term we put them there and then the last term basically we want something that will give us two so it should be five and three so it's going to be a plus five and minus three okay because I know minus five I mean five minus three gives me two so this is sorted so this is pretty simple therefore I know my x is going to be equal to minus 5 I always like to start with the small one or x equals 3 with the bigger one so in ascending order but I mean you can put this in any order so that's the answer so they were giving three marks here well uh, you're getting those marks for each and then for those factors combined that is the three marks one comma one comma two what is the story so when they say round off to two decimal places you've only got two options in metric you do this by completing a square or general quadratic formula but if you look at them they're one in the same thing so I'm not gonna waste my time I'll just use the formula here it's much easier so we have 5x squared minus x minus 9 equals 0 not a problem so this implies that my x equals minus b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a okay remember if you forget what this looks like you take this into okay look in the in the information sheet so this is minus into one because remember there it's minus one so it's minus one remember b is minus one plus or minus the square root okay minus one squared minus four a is five and c is minus nine okay so 2 into 5 okay not a problem so from here you just conclude x equals or x equals they set to two decimal places so let's start so um, I have here minus into minus 1 I'm going to start with the I don't know man let's start with the negative 1 minus the square root of minus 1 squared minus 4 
into 5 into minus 9 over 2 into 5 Alright, so I get a very ugly number, so it's minus 1, 2, 5, okay, to two decimal places. So what I can do, I just go back, don't want to stress myself here, and just go and change the sign. See, these fancy calculators save you a lot of unnecessary stress and maybe mistakes, but again, whichever method works the, fa the fastest for you. So this is um, again 1 comma 1 comma 4 5 okay not a problem so let's see what happened here why do they look alike they look so much alike Let's just check and be sure if we're not making a mistake. Well, I'm sorry guys, I'm talking alone. So, <laughs> sometimes this thing called the mind, yeah, it's correct. All right, so those are the answers that you are expected to have. So, for this one, usually this is four marks, but they don't care to copy that because they gave you so for the correct substitution here and each one you get your three marks and you say thank you very much I'm moving on so you guys were having a bit of fun I mean this is pretty standard so there is no tricks at all so we are solving for x here we have x squared is less than or equal to 3x all right so how do you handle that okay so this is the one this uh, I don't know if this is very much visible, but it looks a bit distant to me. So it's x squared less than and equal to 3x. So this is easy because all you need to do is to transpose the 3x. So it's x squared minus 3x less than and equal to 0. All right. So here there's no better way but to take the highest common factor, which is x into x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. Now once you get here it's very nice because all you've got to do to solve here you need your table. So I love my table method so I've shown you again this one on what mathematics in the classroom paper one material I've shown you guys how to work this one out okay so you can choose either the parabolic one, draw a graph and then decide what's happening or you can use the table which I'm going to show now. So the critical values here is 0 and 3, okay? Always place them in ascending order. When you equate this to 0, you forget the you know, inequality there. You just say equal to 0, then you solve for x. x would be 0 or x would be 3, you put them there. They are called critical values here and then you place those factors as they appear in those brackets and then here you're getting the product because we're multiplying. If we're dividing you would put the division. So now let's have a look. What happens to this factor when it is zero? It will be zero. When it's greater than zero it's going to be positive. So we're interested in the signs here it, with regards to this factor according to this setup here. When it's 3, it's still positive. Greater than 3, it's positive. All right? So if you established one side is positive, obviously the other one is going to be negative. Let's put 1 less than 0. Already becomes negative. Now, what happens to this factor? Again, 0 won't affect it so much, but I want to establish where my 0 is. So when this is 3, this one will become 0 here. And then if it is more than 3, it becomes positive because if you put a 4 there, you get a positive answer. But any number less than 3, say a 2, you get a negative. So if you already established one side to be positive, 
the remainder will become negative on the other side. Now let's do the product. Minus times minus is a plus. Zero multiplied by any number is not all. Positive times a negative is negative. And then here we're getting zero. Any number multiplied by zero becomes zero. And then here we're getting positive. So what do we want? We want the product that is less than or equal to zero, meaning it's negative. So that means our solution, these ones are included because it says equal to zero and it must be less. So it's this region over here. Okay, so how do we write the answer here? Therefore, we know our x must be less than or equal to three or greater than or equal to zero. So that's how you answer that question. Of course, you have plenty other options to employ. You can use the parabola, solve for the intercepts, and then you know your a is greater than zero. Ne? So your graph will have a minimum. All right, so the minimum is going to be between the two intercepts, which is x and zero. It lends you right into the same answer. So let's not waste too much time there. They're giving us four marks. I do think here you're getting this and then for those factors and then for this setup usually this format gets, gives you two marks so you have four marks there like I said you can go watch um, those videos I labeled uh, mathematics in the classroom paper and material for more on how to solve question one related questions okay so not a big deal. So we are sorted here. We are sorted. So let's see what else do we have. Now we are given something else. So question one, they always like to throw punches. So get used to it. So 1.2, we are given a plus 64 over a equals 16. Then we are told to solve for a. Okay, let's just solve this one on the fly. Not a problem. We don't want to work ourselves too much. So 1.2, we are given a plus 64 over a equals 16, all right? And then 1.2.1 says we must solve for a. So we just copy this, a plus 64 over a equals 16. So what I like to do here, there are many ways to solve this. I mean, you can solve here and then cross multiply, but I don't like to stress myself. I just express everything as a fraction and then I look in the denominator. Of course, when they are not the same, you look for the LCM, which is called the lowest common multiple. I know you guys are told LCD, which, okay. <laughs> fine but technically it's not correct to say that okay maybe i'm crazy maybe i don't know what it means but yeah i would prefer lcm because you want the lowest common multiple of your denominators which is going to be a right because one times a times one is just a so that's the lowest it's when you multiply each one of those together you get that so that means once you get your LCM, you multiply by A throughout, okay? What do we have? This is going to be such that when you multiply that, you get A squared plus 64, because A will cancel here, equals 16A, okay? That's what we have, which implies we have A squared minus 16A plus 64 equals 0. So they gave us a quadratic sort of. So now let's see. 64 such that we get 16. So this should be, remember the two brackets are negative because the last term is positive. So factors of 64 that together may give us 16 is eight and eight. Okay, not a problem. So you need to be quick with easy numbers don't stress therefore a equals 8 because I mean these are equal roots so that's fine how many marks were they giving there three marks all right not a problem so 
I don't know. Maybe to get this situation is better. It's quite significant and to get these factors in the final answer is important. But of course you need to show what you did. Alright. Great. So 1.2.2. What do they want? Now they are telling us hence solve 2 to exponent x plus 2 to exponent 6. See now this question paper is not so very clear here but I think this is 6 minus x okay equals 16 so let's just copy that so this is 2 to exponent x plus 2 to exponent 6 minus x I think I'm copying it right I just hope so but we'll see if we get stuck in our solutions then it will tell us something is not right and then we'll try and fix it because I mean I, I guess this paper was you know scanned it seems like it was scanned so didn't come out very nicely by whoever was doing it but thank God they did it because you can have a look as to what is going on remember now these are exponents now if they say hence solve it means it will have some relationship with what we just did above but let's have a look and see what is the story here this is fine it's a prime one you leave it like that but you have to break this one plus this is 2 to exponent 6 multiplied by 2 to exponent minus x all right equals 16 now always want to express this as a positive power or should I say a positive exponent or a power with a positive exponent ah doch. there that comes 2 to exponent 6 over this one comes to the bottom so that it becomes 2 to exponent x isn't it equals 16 so if you look at this 2 to exponent 6 is actually 64 so we have a setup like that basically and now again here you know that our LCM is going to be equal to 2 to exponent x, isn't it? Because we don't, in fact, this is over 1, this is over 1. So the LCM is when you multiply those denominators together, they just give us that. And then we just multiply by 2 to exponent x throughout. This will be such that we have 2 to exponent x multiplied by 2 to exponent x, right? Plus here 2 to exponent x multiplied by 2 to exponent x will cancel. So we just remain with 64. Maybe let's leave it at, as 2 to exponent 6 so far. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe let's just let's just say 64 let's not cause ourselves any unnecessary strain equals 16 times 2 to exponent x isn't it so that's what we're going to have so if you're looking at this it's similar to what we had over there so let's just move everything which implies we have 2 to exponent now remember you can either leave it like this but when you're multiplying powers with the same base all right you simply multiply the exponents okay you take the base and you multiply the exponents so this is going to be no 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 you add the exponents sorry what am I saying powers with the same base you simply add exponents so this is going to be 2x okay plus oops no 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 this is going to be minus we transpose this guy is going to be 16 times 2 to exponent x plus 64 equals 0. So we have to solve for x here. But now if you're thinking about this, this is similar to that, right? Let's see if we can factorize it. So this is one of the technical questions, okay? It's for higher grade back in the days. Now we have to think about it. So the best way here is to have 2 to exponent x, 2 to exponent x, right? Because we know these two together will give me that. And then these brackets are both negative. But now what must I have here? Factors of 64, it's 8 and 8. And I know when I say 2 to exponent x times 8 is going to be minus 8 to 
times 2 to exponent x again that one gives me 16 times 2 to exponent x so this is cool so it's sorted so what do I do therefore I mean these are the same things therefore I know that 2 to exponent x equals 8 therefore oh let's say which implies okay sometimes yeah it gets a bit cumbersome so which implies now if that is the case this implies that we have 2 to exponent x equals 2 I mean here you need to know that this is 2 cubed if you don't know you just write 8 on your calculator right and then you press it down as an answer and then you press shift and then you press this thing fact it gives you it's 2 cubed so you have plenty of um, options so I mean if you don't know use your calculator but if you don't know yeah it becomes a problem therefore x equals 3 all right that was a bit uh, advanced I think so for them to give the remarks is a little bit unfair but anyway that's what they did because I mean look where we came from to where we ended up so yeah I don't know where these three marks are but I would give more than three marks for this type of question uh, probably probably the best one is to give a mark here because I think it's quite a great milestone day remember here you're being tested for exponents so it looks alright to do that and perhaps uh, what can I do so you can decide whether you want to give it there or here but in any case I can give the mark there alright so that is two marks and then maybe give the last one a bit unfair for it to be three marks but it's fine they decided otherwise I think the trick here is you noticing yeah, this is a quadratic of some kind but involving exponents so which is why you need to practice these things so that they don't startle you at least they gave you a guide with this question if they didn't it would become a little bit a situation yeah a big situation okay not a problem let's just keep moving we have a lot of work ahead of us so that was 1.2 done so let's see 1.3 what do they want here please don't blink my card my thingy my camera so it says without using a calculator calculate the value of all right again this is sets also involving exponents all right not a problem so let's deal with this one easily so it's a square root of 2 to exponent 1002 plus 2 to exponent 1006 right right Ish. This was not quite a good copy though. But let's see, 17. If we get stuck, we will know we need to make adjustments in case this is 22998. Okay, this is an 8. Okay, I don't know why it didn't want to show up. Okay. So this square root captures everything. This is equal to. The square root of now the keyword you look at the smallest you see 2 to exponent 998 you want to use that as your benchmark so you need to convert those to some sort of a 2 to exponent 998 I always use this one because I don't like to struggle so let's just have a look here 1002 uh, minus 998 is what is 4 so I know already here this is going to be 2 to exponent 9, 9, 8 times 2 to exponent 4, right? Because when I multiply powers with the same base, I simply add exponents. So I know that 4 plus 9, 9, 8 will give me 1002, okay? So this is plus, again, you change this. 
so you're just going to say here um, 1006 minus 998 is what is 8 so I have here 2 to exponent 9 9 8 times 2 to exponent 8 all of that divide by 17 times 2 to exponent 9 9 8 okay great so this is much easier now because I can see that okay look all I'm going to do now is to take out a common factor which is the highest common factor remember it's HCF 2 to exponent 9 9 8 into 2 to exponent 4 plus 2 to exponent 8 okay all of that divide by 17 into 2 to exponent 998 so the greatest thing is you are able to take out those factors okay this is now cool so what do we have here so now I'm not going to prolong this 2 to exponent 4 is 16 right plus 2 to exponent 8 which is 64 okay 2 to exponent 8 I'm lying it's not 64 goodness it's 256 then plus the 16 so I get 2 72 over 17 I think the idea of saying not using the calculator is just for you to be able to you know do this and then I know 272 divided by 17 is 16 right yes so this is now the square root of 16 which is 4 okay not a problem so I'm cool with this one so uh, this was a bit of a nice question as well so they're giving four marks uh, I don't know man of course I know the one mark is coming from there and obviously the other mark is coming from there then maybe we can give a mark for whatever you did here maybe half a mark whatever and essentially for converting these into those so I think this is where this breakdown of four marks will be coming from all right not a problem so you guys must have been having a lot of fun these are very simple questions really okay let's do 1.4 it's always the standard you see sometimes exponents versus uh, you know nature of the roots uh, versus thirds like this versus pretty much anything but usually the extras in this question one is exponents is thirds and nature of the roots usually uh, and maybe proving a real value situation like for which values of this would this one be real or unreal but like I said it's nature of the roots so if you say nature of the roots thirds and exponents these are the things that come in here and even logs okay think of logs as well so those are the spices but the rest is pretty standard okay now we're solving simultaneously so this is where two graphs are equal so we have 2x minus y equals 2 we have 1 over x minus 3y equals 1 okay so this one looks more complicated I can already work work y in this first one so let's just do this I have um, 2x minus y equals 2 which implies if I solve for y here y is going to be 2x minus 2 okay I can make this one equation 1 and then I have here 1 over x minus 3y equals 1 I make this one equation 2 I leave it as it is alright so if I say put 1 in 2 what are we going to have we have 1 over x minus 3 instead of y you put that expression 2x minus 2 equals 1 
this implies what we solve that one it's 1 over x minus minus 3 times 2 is minus 6 x minus 3 times minus 2 is plus 6 okay equals 1 now we can tell that everything is over 1 except that one so again here you look for your LCM which is going to be x because x times 1 times 1 times 1 is just x then we multiply by x throughout this is such that we have now 1 remember if we multiply by x here we have 1 minus 6x squared plus 6x equals x okay that's when you multiply throughout so we try to move everything to this side and then rearrange this implies that I have 6x squared this one minus 6x uh, plus x okay this one is already there then minus 1 equals to 0 so I just moved everything to the other side and then just rearranged so no big deal here so I still have 6x squared this one is minus 5x uh, minus 1 um, equal to 0 okay great so I always attempt to factorize but you can just put this into the general quadratic formula if you want so I know I'm going to have to have 6x here for me to get something like 5 and then of course I need this one to be negative so this bracket is going to be like that but factors of minus 1 is minus 1 and plus 1 then I know it's going to be minus 6x plus x it gives me minus 5 so it's sorted therefore x equals minus 1 over 6 okay or x equals 1 alright so if you like ah doch, okay let's just do it let's not be lazy you are learning you guys and then this implies this therefore tells me y equals now I'm going to substitute this into 1 okay you can just say sub x values into equation 1 okay maybe that is what you need to say sub x values into equation 1 this implies uh, this will imply ne, that y equals 2 into minus 1 over 6 okay uh, minus 2 or y equals uh, when you put 1 in there is going to be 2 into 1 minus 2 therefore y equals so 2 goes 3 times so it's going to be minus a third or y equals 2 minus 2 is 0 okay not a problem so this is done so I'm not going to try and check I've done a video on how you could work out things and check if they are true so all you can do here you can substitute the x value and its corresponding y value into that and prove that the left hand side equals the right hand side that would tell you that your answers are correct if they are wrong then you won't have that okay let's just do it now that I thought of it so here we have 1 divide by this is a fraction as well okay let's just not do that let's put an open bracket first negative and then we do that one a third okay and then we say minus three into what did we get wife oh, what did I do now how can I do that so this one is minus one over six actually minus 1 over 6 okay minus 3 into y is minus a third 
so I'm just choosing these values and substituting them you can also use them in this one and see if you get the same answer the left hand side equaling the right hand side let's see what that is equal to so something is not right here man oh yeah I made a mistake here this is not correct because this is a third minus two so yo 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 I'm sorry guys you see thank god I wanted to check because if I didn't check I was gonna be in trouble so this is minus two still okay it's not done so this is minus a third of course what I do I just multiply three that's six minus six minus seven so it's gonna be minus seven over two anyway let's just check and be sure sometimes I like to make mistakes yeah I've got it see not over two but over three hey when you got to so by risk we flight risk I'm fun <laughs> that is on top of this this is minus seven over three okay not a problem so just that adjustment see I could tell because the answer wasn't right so let's go back again see sometimes when you check you discover because if you don't check certain things you don't make a habit of checking things I promise you it's so easy to make errors and very very silly errors that you don't need you know so this is minus 7 over 3 yeah boy now I get one so you see it's correct so I won't try this one let's just try this one there you put x as 1 you see you get 0 and then 0 equals to 0 so both answers are correct imagine if you didn't check this mistake is very easy to make and get this wrong okay that is the easy six marks so I mean to adjust this is fine to do a correct substitution there is fine and I think these x values are important and there's two y a not you this one and that one so this is where the six marks come from okay of course the rest is just how you go about it so it was not a bad one question one was fairly nice except for this i think this one for me would take the cake as a little bit com complex because you have to think of exponents in a manner of quadratics maybe this one also but it's pretty standard as well I wouldn't really put so much emphasis on that all right guys so question one is over so there's the 26 marks I hope we got it all right so now let's get to our number patterns which is sequences and series Okay, let's try another one before this one dies on me. Um, but my pens are really dying. They are really dying. Alright, so let's have a look at this one. Question two. Oh, here one. Everything is like refusing to work okay there's our question two so question 2.1 says the first term of an arithmetic sequence is minus one and the seventh term is 35 so we are being told this is an AS okay great so we know that 2.1 says we have t1 equals minus 1 and t7 equals 35 all right so what are we going to do here for 2.1.1 we are asked uh, to determine the common difference of the sequence not a problem 
so we know here that look what we can say here is T1 remember Tn is what so T1 actually let me let me see go to Tn but buffet with a plus n minus 1 times D ne? yeah so which is going to be a plus D T1 is just a yeah doch. So I know that T1 is A, so no problems here. So we have A equals minus 1, because A is T1. Okay? So also I know that T7, so this is A plus 6D equals 35, isn't it? So I'm not going to stress myself here if you if you guys don't know what happened here. Think of the nth term that Tn equals a plus n minus 1 times d. Now when you have T1, you just put a 1 there. 1 minus 1 is 0 and then that thing falls off. T1 becomes a. That's why I'm writing it like that. This is all borrowed from that. Okay. So all of this is given, all right? And we're told this is an AS. So that's why I know it's like that. And then T7, if you put a seven in there, you're going to put seven minus one is six times D, six D. So that's what I have over there. So which also implies now that minus one plus six D equals 35. This also implies that six D equals 35 plus 1 uh, I don't know why I'm prolonging this 6 D equals 36 therefore D equals 6 because 36 divided by 6 is what? is 6 man why am I silly now? okay so I know that my common difference is 6. So they were just giving me 2 marks. Wow. Maybe for this substitution and for the answer. These guys can be a little bit, you know. So okay, 2.1.2. We don't have much time. We don't want to waste this hour still stagnant. We want to really have moved. It says now. The number of terms in the sequence if the last term of the sequence is 473. Okay? So it's fine. We're being told that Tn equals 473. And we want n. We know what this means. Tn is always a plus n minus 1 times t equals 473. Now, this also implies a was minus 1, we know, right? And then, plus, this is the guy we don't know, but we know d is 6 equals 4, 7, 3. And we keep working, which also implies what? We can move this guy over that side, so all we're going to have here is... Okay, let's just deal with this once and for all minus 1 plus 6 and this is when you distribute the 6 into this bracket minus 6 equals 4 7 3 now we have 8 over here we have 8 oh no 7 sorry 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 this implies that 6 and minus 7 equals 4, 7, 3, okay? Which will tell us that 6n is going to be equal to, let's see now, 4, 7, 3 plus 7 is for 80, Baba. Therefore, n is going to be, what? 80. So that is fine. It's very easy. 
not a big deal so this is pretty easy so no big deal here they were giving what three marks all right so i think that is perfect substitution into the formula maybe let's not give it here but here where we substituted they were giving what three marks yeah and then i don't know man i don't know i don't know i don't know so maybe to break this bracket eventually to just put it down here and then the answer is fine i don't know where these marks are you know technically so don't pay too much attention there so we have 2.1.3 over there so what do they want they are telling you and i the sum of the first 40 terms in this sequence okay so we know that well sn equals n over 2 into so we don't know the 40th term so we're going to use 2a plus n minus 1 times d okay that implies that s40 will be equal to 40 over 2 into 2 into minus 1 we know that a was minus 1 right plus n is 40 minus 1 times d which we got as 6 so I'm not going to waste my time here and do a lot of unnecessary things okay maybe let's simplify it a bit so this is 40 divided by 2 which is 20 into let's just mess up this bracket into one thing so this is 40 minus 1 which is 39 right times 6 this is now 234 minus 2 here yeah. this is 232 now times 20 gives us 4640 that is the answer okay okay so that is easy not a big deal uh, they were giving just two marks for this one so I do think here the correct substitution and the answer is what matters all right not a problem so this was easy again they didn't tie this one at all if you watched those videos uh, that I showed you which is I said uh, I think I said question two material or something Mathematics in the classroom, paper two, right? Paper one, question two, material, I don't know. Or oh, I wrote sequences and series. I think I wrote sequences and series. So you guys are having fun. I mean, this paper was nice, okay? This paper was nice. So let's look through 2.2. Uh, what do we have here? So you guys were having fun, indeed. So they're telling us now it's a quadratic number pattern. So 2.2, we have 75, 53, 35, 21, and so on. Is a quadratic number pattern or pattern. Now it says write down the fifth term of the number pattern. So that's easy because we know how to do this one. Determine the nth term of the art. Oh, easy. Okay. Determine the maximum. Now here this one, like me. I have been making videos such that when we get these, I would show you the graphs. So now you know it has something to do with the graph. So this is, you know most that the general formula is a quadratic. So a quadratic will have a maximum or a minimum at the turning point. So this is something related to the graphical thought in this thing. So I hope you guys watch those videos, please. You will gain a lot of what probably may startle you when you meet it here otherwise these questions are becoming more and more fun for me i mean it's easy so let's just start with 2.2 nice and easy because i don't want us to finish an hour okay maybe we're almost there 
Okay, so we are given here 75, 53, 35, 21, dash, dash. Okay. So 2.2.1. They want T5. And they just want us to write it down. So we need to work it out though. So we know that we need those first differences, right? Right. Maybe I should not be answering here. It's 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 giving me a bit of a nightmare. And then you know from these values that we're going to get. Okay, let's just do it first. It's 53 minus 75. So I get minus 22 here. Okay. And then between these two is 35 minus 53. It's minus 18. And then here is 21 minus 35. This is minus 14. Okay. Of course, this is another sequence of its own, which is a linear sequence. Because be, if this is a quadratic, this is a QS quadratic number pattern. It tells us that um, we are going to have first differences. Okay, then we're going to have the second differences. Here, let's see what is the story here. Minus 14 plus 18 is 4 so it should be 4 here minus 18 plus 22 yeah it's 4 so that's what it is and then of course for us to get to this term I know for a fact that I need this guy right so for me to get this guy I know between these two it is 4 as well so I just add 4 there so I get minus 10 here right and then I add this 10 to that 21 uh, sorry 21 minus 10 is going to be um, 11 so this is the one this is the one this is the one that they want because there were four times one two three four and then this is the fifth so Therefore, we know when we answer 2.2.1, so we're going to say T5 equals 11. And what is the other way you could have done this, even if you didn't do this last portion here? If you take this 4, you add to that 14 and to that 21, it should give us that. Let's see. 4 minus 14 plus 21 is definitely 11. So, in essence, you could have looked at it in this manner. You could have decided instead of doing this, you just take this. You add all of those together. You don't really need to picture this at some point. So this is also useful, but sometimes it's, you, you, you just don't need it. So you can just use this one and you just add from bottom to top it gives you the next term all right not a problem so that was one mark because they just said write down so 2.2.2 .2 they want the nth term which is tn so it's easy so you know here fine this represents 2a, so we know here that 2a equals 4, which is the constant difference. Again, watch the video on the quadratic sequence I did, so that you can learn the most out of quadratic sequences, at least for your level. Then you will see that if you twist it around and you play around the limits, you will be limitless. Therefore, I know a here is... Um, 2 right because 4 divided by 2 is a I also know that 3a plus b equals minus 22 those are the very first 
differences so the very first one is represented by 3a plus b okay please know how this is derived because it makes life easy this implies that 3 into 2 plus b equals minus 22 therefore b equals I'm not going to stress myself here this is 6 so it's going to be minus 28 right minus 2 2 minus 6 yebo. so that is what I have uh, so also I know a plus b plus c equals term 1 is represented by this is 75 okay this implies that 2 plus minus 28 plus c equals 75 therefore c is equal to I don't like to waste too much time here so this is 2 minus 28 is minus 26 okay then when you transpose that we have 75 plus 26 I get 101 okay so I know for a fact that now my tn is going to be equal to uh, 2n squared minus 28n plus 101. So that is my nth term. Maybe to start off this one would have been to say tn equals an squared plus bn plus c. Okay. This is built from that theory. And then we start working it out. Of course we're using what we have over there. So that is the answer they are looking for. This is usually 4 marks, yes. Because for determining these guys and then putting them together is 4 marks okay easy 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 now let's see what is the story here now 2.2.3 says determine the maximum value of the following number pattern now this is 15 minus 53 over 5 7 minus 21 over 5 now if you look at this and compare it with this one remember this is your parent question so never forget it now you will see there's a 53 there's a 21 there's one two three four so there were four terms there also ending with 21 there was a 53 but what happened you will see that every term is divided by 5 because 75 divides 5 into 15 let's say 75 divided by 5 is 15 you see but now it's minus 15 so that means we divided by a negative 5 right right because all these terms are now negative all of a sudden so we divided by negative 5 so basically to get this sequence we took what we had above and divided by negative 5 so it's not a big one so it says now determine the maximum value so essentially here okay let's just do this one alone I'm not writing so nicely with this pen it's just you know blotting everything so I don't like it let's go back to this one so um, 2.2.3 okay this minus 15 is to 53 minus 53 over 5 is to minus 7 is to minus 21 over 5 it implies that our TN in 2.2.2 is divided by minus 5 okay I don't know I don't have a better way to express this one which implies that we have what was the TN there then this implies that um, TN over 5 equals <coughs> sorry um, uh, maybe let's not say over 5 right 
doesn't really help therefore this new sequence uh, we divided each term by 5 I don't know how am I going to phrase this man I'm trying to be as systematic as I usually am so what we did here we know that now the tn of this new sequence is just that one divided by minus 5 so it's going to be 2n squared minus 28n plus 101 all of this over minus 5 this is what we have so we don't want to stress we always try to strike a resemblance so this is minus 2 over 5n squared this one is going to be plus when you divide by minus 5 there's going to be plus 28 over 5n minus 101 over 5 so this is the new number pattern okay maybe let's say which implies that therefore the tn of the new sequence is like this now for maximum we know that it implies that the first derivative of our tn must be equal to zero right right but the other way i like to do this is to do this by completing a square sometimes i find it much easier if i complete a square but yeah it's going to be a bit of a nightmare with all of those numbers so we have to pull stuff out and when we do that it becomes a bit of a a nightmare so oh, but we can but let's just use our differential calculus okay this means we want the first derivative of tn to be equal to zero so what happens there this implies what when you do the first derivative there we get minus 4 over 5 n because now it cancels that and then plus 28 over 5 all right derivative of a constant is 0 so this is equal to 0 which implies what now minus 4 over 5 n equals minus 28 over 5 okay great therefore n is going to be equal to now let's see what are we doing here so we divide by minus 4 so let's do this one nice and easy nice and easy so minus 28 over 5 divide by minus 4 over 5 I get 7 okay so n is 7 all right so that means term number 7 is the maximum term of this situation okay so this therefore means that t7 in this new sequence we're going back to this one t7 is going to be equal to minus 2 over 5 because we want that value now um, we're going to get here 7 squared plus 28 over 5 uh, into 7 minus 101 over 5 okay so we're just going to get that maximum value so I'm not going to stress myself I just do it on the calculator so minus 2 over 5 into 7 squared plus 28 oh wait a minute 28 over 5 into 7 minus 101 over 5 so we just get the answer there so the answer I'm getting is minus 3 over 5 so that means that's the maximum value of our sequence because that is it oh lord I don't know uh,
therefore maximum value of sequence is equal to maybe to write it well the maximum value of the sequence is equal to 3 over 5 all right so maybe let's just say here therefore t seven equals minus 3 over 5 and then we make that conclusion so this was a bit of a challenge in any case from here you have other options where you can say n equals minus b over 2a and then that is when you want the term number which you would get as 7 and then you substitute this one back into the original like we did you can have it or you can just go straight and say here if you want the y value so y is going to be 4ac minus b squared over 4a okay and if you just did this one it will land you right here and this one is much quicker because they said maximum value they didn't care to ask you what term number it was so this one is a bit of an extra step so this can actually simplify your life or you do it by completing a square which i would have loved to show but maybe on another video i can take this question and do it by completing a square because this is fun you know sometimes it's it's nice uh, why do I like to do it why do I feel like I want to do it by completing a square so let's try give you a bit of an extra amount of work so if I want to complete a square here we have to take out this minus 2 over 5 right what we're going to end up with first of all remember we can't complete a square when the coefficient of n or x is a number so if we take that one out we remain with n squared okay but if we took a negative this one automatically becomes a negative so what are we going to multiply this to to get this value so obviously this must be 14 isn't it it must be 14 n okay great because when you multiply this into that you get minus 28 sorry plus 28 over 5 great and what do we end up with here when we take this one out 101 uh, let's see 101 divided by 2 is what is 50,5 Alright, oh, what are we going to do, man? What are we going to do now? 50,5 is 101 over 2. Whew. That's strange. That is strange. What am I going to do here? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Okay, let's just write 101 over 2 here. That's what we're going to have. All right. So let's say this one times uh, 2 over 5. Well, let's see if it's going to give us what we had. Because at times these things, yeah, it does. So this is cool. So this is right. Now that we have this thing here we can do our completion of our square here we have minus 2 over 5 into now we know here we're going to have n squared minus 14n okay plus so we take half of this it's going to be 7 yeah we have the coefficient of n and then we square it and then of course we add it on both sides so we're going to have 101 over 2 then we subtract this one I don't know if you can see but yeah I think I'm losing a bit of my focus too so okay 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 those are equal signs minus 2 over 5 
into now we take what is under the square and put it together so we're going to have n take the original sign put 7 here squared and uh, oh, minus 101 over 2 and then here minus what 7 squared is 49 right think so sometimes these numbers escape me all right so let's see I want to see if we're gonna get this number uh, we have minus 2 over 5 into n minus 7 squared minus so let's say minus 101 over 2 minus 49 it's minus 199 over 2 which now we're going to have minus 2 over 5 into n minus 7 all squared minus now when you multiply that it becomes a plus right then we're going to multiply this one by oops minus 2 over 5 so we just put it back in there and then I get here 199 over 5 yay something is not right here something is not right why is it not working now it must work man it must work but now it's not remember this is always positive it's either zero or any positive value but because of this one it will always be negative so the best it can be is zero so this one falls away so why is this one not the same as what I got here that means something in my calculation here is not correct something in my calculation is not right yeah right oh, why why did it oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah I maintained this sign this sign is supposed to be positive here okay <laughs> Now it makes a bit of sense now. So this sign was supposed to be positive when we pull a negative. Okay. Great. Now I know where my mistake was. So this is positive. So let's sort it out. Nice and easy. So here we're going to have 101 over 2 uh, minus 49. So this is 3 over 2, okay? Yeah, now it makes a bit of sense. So this is plus 3 over 2, okay? So this is plus 3 over 2, which becomes, uh, maybe let's just wrap this step off. So this becomes minus 2 over 5 into n minus 7 all squared. Now when you put this one back, it becomes minus uh, 3 over 2. Okay, because if you multiply that, you get minus 6 over 10. And then... 2 goes 3 times to 6 goes 5 times to 10 not not over 2 man over 5 okay great so now therefore the maximum value is going to be equal to minus 3 over 5 because this will always be positive or 0 but because of the negative it will always be negative 
so the maximum it can be you set this one to zero then it takes that one away so you remain with this value so completing a square can work together as a single step yo guys I, wa I wasted time sorry and wasting time is not good but uh, it's good when you have something to to learn remember the purpose here is to teach so this is where you walk away with the 16 marks again this was probably probably something that others would not see immediately but if you worked uh, November's question paper say November 2021 I think also May June last year they had a question about a maximum value so you must have checked those but maybe the trick here was to say what happened. I mean, you can work it out the usual way, but you don't need to. Just take it from the top, complex it, work it out, your life becomes easy. So that's how you would have done that. So let's move, guys. I don't know. Now I've wasted more time than I wanted to. I really didn't want to waste so much time, but <laughs> ah, time is something else, man. Okay, let's see question three. Ah, if I feel like I've gone for too long, I'll break it down into other things. So, 3.1, we have 10, 24, 2, So, you can see this is geometrically going down. So, they're telling us this is a GS, okay? This is a geometric sequence, they said. So 3.1.1, they want the 10th term. So we know that, um, okay, let's start here. So we know that A equals 10.24, right? R is going to be what? 256 over 10.24. Okay, which is a quarter. Let's see if 64 divided by 256 gives us the same thing. Yes, it's a quarter. So our R is less than 1, so you know which formula to use, right? Right. So not a problem. So this is when you're doing the sum anyway. So we know that Tn equals A. Rn minus 1. So what do they want? T10. This implies that T10 is going to be equal to A is 10, 24 into a quarter raised to 10 minus 1. Yeah. This is done. Therefore T10 is what? Let's see. Uh, 10, 24 into a quarter raised to the exponent 9. Okay, that's what it effectively is. So I have here 1 over 256. Okay, not a problem. So I don't think that one is complicated. It is just a simple thing, so that's why it is two marks. Because I think here, correct substitution and getting to that answer is all that matters. 3.1.2, okay, maybe let's move a bit quicker. So here we are told, calculate the sum to eight terms starting from P equals zero. So we have sigma of 256 into four, to exponent 1 minus p, I hope I'm reading it correctly, starting from p equals to 0 until 8, okay? All right, so it tells us that we have nine terms in this thing, okay? But the best way to do this is to always expand because you don't know what you are dealing with. I see that this is 8, and then p is 0. So this is 2, 5, 6 into 4, into what? 1 minus p. Okay. Yeah, sometimes things are not right here. 
but let's see let's start with p is 0 when p is 0 this is just 4 to 1 okay so let's see 2 5 6 times 4 it's going to be 10 24 so do you see it is that sequence <laughs> Well, these guys can be very silly, but if there's a sigma, that means we're adding. So let's go. The next one, we put 1. So this becomes 0. So it is 2, 5, 6. Can you see? That was the second term. Plus, we always expand it to 3 terms at least. Let's put a 2 in there. So this is a quarter. So 2, 5, 6 multiplied by a quarter. You know... These things are interesting. It is 64, so it is exactly that sequence plus dash dash dash. So I don't really care to find the last one. I could if I want, but I'm not interested. So they want what? Calculate um, the sum to 10 terms, okay? I mean to 8 terms. Hmm. Okay, so number of terms basically here is going to be 8 minus 0 plus 1 which is 9 okay do not make a mistake of thinking there are 8 terms here because starting with 0 always take the top minus the bottom and you add 1 so we want the sum this is a geometric sequence we know now that this is a geometric series with r equals a quarter from above a equals 10 24 so we know that find S N equals A into, remember our R is less than 1, so we're going to use this one. But it doesn't matter really what you do, which implies that S9 is going to be A, which is 10, 24, into 1 maybe let's put a big bracket 1 minus now that one was a quarter raised to the 9 all right all over 1 minus a quarter so this is easy so i have 1024 into 1 minus a quarter Eesh, this thing is so cool. I'm feeling like I am over the moon. <laughs> okay, I'm not over the moon. But I'm thinking I am over the moon, but I'm a bit fried now. I don't know why I prolonged this thing, man. Yo, 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 look what I get. I get, I'm going to round it off to two decimal places so it makes more sense. It's 1,365,33 to two decimal places. Remember the general instructions where necessary to, uh, I mean, two decimal places at least. So we leave it at that. So you see, that was cool. How many marks were they giving here? Four marks. Okay. So, all right, all right, all right. Correct substitution here and the answer. But I think what was crucial is getting the number of terms. Is there anything really? Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Maybe I can award you a mark for finding out what that was. Okay. So, four marks, wherever they are hiding, I'm not interested. Okay, let's do the last question here. And decide if we want to proceed or not. Okay. But I think you guys were having fun. I mean, these were easy questions. The first two terms of a geometric sequence are... Remember, this is a GS, so we have a common ratio. Uh, this minus t squared minus 6t minus 9 and now these are the first two terms so this is t1 this is t2 okay yeah this one is crazy all right now it says determine the values of t for which the sequence will converge ah uh, when will this is when r is less than 1 greater than minus 1 so basically we want the ratio of these two 
to be less than 1 and greater than 1. So 5 marks was a bit of work. So they're giving you a bit of some quadratic expressions here. Ah, Lord, Lord. Not a problem. For a convergence sequence, all I'm going to do, I'm just going to jump in here. I'm not interested. I know that for a convergence sequence, R must be... Oh, Lord, I, I hate to just jump in. So we can just say for a convergent GS geometric sequence, it is such that R is less than 1, greater than minus 1, okay? This implies what this thing here, um, t cubed plus 9t squared plus 27t plus 27 over 2 then divide by minus t squared minus 6t minus 9 must be less than 1 greater than minus 1 so it's a very ugly expression uh, let's go for it and this also implies we just refine this thing a bit so obviously when you when you divide you just simply multiply into the denominator this thing over here so we're going to have here t cubed plus 9t squared plus 27t plus 27 all over 2 into minus t squared minus 6 t minus 9 all of that must be less than 1 so this is what we have okay now we know this is a trinomial so we need to factorize that thing so we need to find a factor so when you find a factor for the top you're going to use factor theorem long division whatever you want but I'm gonna go about it the quickest way so let's try one and see what we get uh, sometimes you have to try factors again you can use your calculator it can give you some nice numbers there let's try let's try let's try I, I'm just working on the top now let's say if I put one obviously this is not gonna be zero ne? so you can't use positive values because all terms are positive there. so no positive factors there let's try minus one cubed oops whoa cubed um, plus 9 into minus 1 squared plus 27 into minus 1 plus 27 so I'm getting 8 so it doesn't work out so let's try a minus 2 like I said you can't put a positive value because all the terms are positive so it's never going to work so let's try a 2 so what do we get oh my friends this is taking forever you know so I don't know I'm getting 1 so it's not working let's try a minus 3 now a minus 3 man it must give us it must give us it must give us now otherwise getting tired of this I'm gonna use my shorthand calculator method if this doesn't work cause yeah so it's minus 3 this thing so if we know that we're putting minus 3 so that means the factor here so the factor here remember this is less than I don't know what I, I was trying to write this is less than so I know that now t because this is going to be in terms of 3 t plus 3 because remember when you equate this to 0 it becomes minus 3 ne. and then the other factor must be a quadratic which means it must be something like this so we're going to try man we're going to try and see what our numerator is doing so it must be all less than one so now I know if I have a 3 what must I multiply this 3 with over here to get me that 27 it must be 9 
right now I know that all these terms are positive so I'm not worried about signs here so this is going to be a plus 9 because for it to give me a plus 27 so here I always decide do I want the middle this squared or do I want that it doesn't really matter with me so let's focus on this one the square of course this is going to be t squared okay because this times that must give me that and then this times that must give me that and then I work out the middle term either I choose this or that so I chose that one now for me to get a 90 squared what must I multiply this with I mean this t with over here so that it adds to this one so it must be a 6 it must be a 6t right because if I want 6t is gonna be 6t squared plus 3 so this must be positive as well in any case they're all positive so it works out even if you focused on that one it still would be the same story you know so yeah that's fine so now I know this is positive so I need to change this into positive because I can already see the factors so if I draw out a negative as the highest common factor I'm gonna have minus 2 into t squared plus 60 plus 9 and this quadratic takes that quadratic because it's the same man. Yay! These people are so full of fun. But you guys must have enjoyed this one. So we have t plus 3 over minus 2. Less than 1. So you know what I do here? I don't even stress myself at all. So what I'm going to do... Remember now I can cross multiply over there as well as there. Okay, I'm just going to do that. I don't want to struggle. But remember whenever you multiply by a negative, the sign changes. So I know here at the middle I'm going to have this one. But when I multiply this one there, isn't it, uh, it no longer becomes greater now. Sorry, it no longer becomes greater, it becomes lesser, right? All right, so that becomes the minus 2 comes this side. Ne? Yeah, I think so. What am I saying? Ah, man. I don't know what I'm saying. And when I multiply by negative, that one changes to greater, right? So the greater is going to show up here as 2. So I don't know if you understand, but yeah. Remember this was less. So when you multiply by negative, it changes to greater. It means 2 must be greater than this. And that what, that's what this means, because it means this is less than 2. And when it was here, when you multiply there, it becomes a minus 2. But the sign changes to greater as well. But it means this thing is greater than that. And this thing is greater than that, or this thing is less than that. So that is the story. So now I'm sorted. Uh, therefore, t must be less than when you transpose this. You know, transposing doesn't change the sign. So it becomes minus 1 because this is minus 3. And then when it comes this side, it becomes minus 5. Whoa, greater than minus 5. What am I doing? So that is the answer. So that was a bit of fun. I think but a bit of a challenging question also so they were giving five marks all right so I do think getting to this expression is fine because that's what this implies and then I think what you did here you guys I think factorizing this one warrant a mark and then doing the cancellation another mark okay yeah 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 and then this one also another mark so one two three four and then five but usually this one is two marks so maybe let's drop another mark somewhere maybe let's drop it here 
because once we do the cancellation we get this so maybe let's mark ourselves there so these are our five marks and that is the 11 marks of this question so i don't know guys i feel like i've gone on forever yay i don't want to end up you know overly doing things so let's chop it here and do functions or let's just go further as far forward as we can maybe I will have to stop talking too much and wasting time so yeah I do think again this is one of those questions that probably would work on you if you don't know what you are doing but if you pay attention when things are being done you surely should not have struggled too much there all right, um, thank you guys for watching. And if you feel this is worth sharing, please do share it with as many people as you can uh, so that they too can have a bit of a shot at this and see how things are done. I mean, have a different perspective. I always believed that even though you may have the very best of a teacher, but hearing other people's approaches and opinions about the same idea and also seeing different styles and ways of thinking around these questions will also make sure you become as limitless as possible so even if you're already good trust me watching these videos is not worthless but it is one strong thing for you to have uh, so that when they throw you a curve you just you know, right around that curve and you get it right. So, what can I say? Anyway, thank you guys for watching and if this is good enough for you or you think it is at least, you know, worth a bit of a, a shot or a benefit of the doubt, a thumbs up will also be appreciated because it helps to reach as many people as possible. So, and that too can also help others to find this much more easily then we continue working so i'll see you in the next video where i will be doing more of these questions so we're going to be starting our functions going all the way probably i will see if i cannot go all the way i'll try i'll try and that means i'll have to stop talking nonsense all right guys bye for now Thank you for watching.